So I would like to welcome everyone here. Uh, actually, uh, today we are going to see a topic uh, which is about adaptation uh, to uh, progressive addition lenses. So uh, we have our uh, speaker who is an expert in uh, dispensing optics and uh, you know he's cleared FBDO, which is uh, cleared only by very few people in India. So, and he's been an expert uh, in dispensing optics uh, during his UG level itself. And later he was uh, you know, practicing uh, on prescribing uh, progressive lenses. So, uh, and he has on-field experiences and he has handled many cases with progressive lenses. So, we are very happy to have you here, uh, Mehul. And, uh, um, and uh, we have our uh, student speaker, Ramya. So, uh, so uh, I uh, uh, over to Gomati so that uh, you know we will start with the uh, formal introduction and go over to the session. Thank you so much, Maheshwari, ma'am. So it's very good to have you here once again, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us, ma'am. So introducing Maheshwari, ma'am. Maheshwari, ma'am is the HOD of Innovation and Research at Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry. I would like to welcome you all those who have joined in Zoom as well as in the YouTube to listen to such a wonderful session. We would like to use this platform to discuss on least discussed topics in the field of optometry. I would like to welcome you all once again from Dr. Agarwal's Institute of Optometry team. So now I rec uh, request our uh, MC, Ms. Tayaba, to introduce the speaker and the moderator. Thank you so much for joining us once again, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to all the viewers of today's Optometry Series, Episode 3 of DAIO. The topic for today's Optometry Series is Adaptation to Progressive Addition Lenses. It's indeed a great pleasure and honor to welcome today's moderator, Mr. Mehul Kamlesh Gosalia. Sir has completed a bachelor's in optometry from Elite School and master's in clinical optometry from Sankara Eye Hospital. Sir has received his fellowship in British Dispensing Opticians and... Currently, Sir is the owner of True Vision Opticals in Chennai and visiting lecturer at Sankara Eye Hospital. Pamal, teaching optometric optics, dispensing optics, and contact lenses to UG and PG students. Sir is a life member of Optometric Association of Tamil Nadu Bargal and Madras Optical Association, and member of Optometric Council of India and International Association of Contact Lens Educators. Now, I would request today's speaker, Ms. Ramya Suresh, intern at Dr. Agawal's Eye Hospital to start the session. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tayeba. Yes, Ramya, please start your presentation, Kanna. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about the adaptation to progressive addition lenses. Let's get into the introduction part. A lens designed for fresh biopsy with the power gradually increase from the distant zone to the progressive zone to the near zone. Curvature of the surface increases from its minimum value in distant zone to the maximum value in the near zone. What are the important markings? Fitting. Reference point, FRP, which is also called as the fitting cross, designates the point on the lens that should be placed along the optical axis of the patient. Once removed, this marking may be recreated using a layout chart. Prism reference point, which is located below the FRP, this is the optical center of a PAL and it is used to check prismatic properties prescribed or thinning prism should be verified at this point. Two engraved and microcircles situated 17 mm to the each side of the PRP. These circles are used to verify the axis alignment and can be used with the layout chart to recreate the FRP marking. Design identifier, an engraving located under the nasal microcircle that's unique to each PAL design. Material identifier, which is appears to the right of the design identification and denotes the material. Add engraving appears under the temporal microcircle and denotes the ad power. Verification of the ad power should be made with the engraving, not with the near verification circle. Distance verification circle, which is located above the FRP, this area of the lens may be used to verify prescribed distance power 
but not to use but not to be used verify prism near vision circle near verification circle which is located 18 to 13 to 18 mm below the frp the near verification circle is no longer used to verify total near power modern pulses have varied insist and progression lens that may place the that may place the near area outside of the circle true at power cannot be read by lensometer since the worn portion of the lens will vary from the lensometer mounting now we'll proceed to the quiz yeah ramya so welcome youtube and uh, zoom participants if you recall we already had a session about uh, pals previously so kindly recall and tell me what are the permanent markings in progressive lenses you can answer in the zoom chat box or youtube live chat box I think we can continue the session. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Vasid Ramya. Yes. Let's get into the consideration of uh, to fit a pulse. Understanding the patient, analyzing the prescription, selecting the frame, taking the measurements, edging or mounting the lenses, delivery and final fitting, monitoring of the adaptation. what are the steps understanding the patient then requirements uses occupation and the type of the lens worn before analyze the prescription recheck the prescription measurements which is frame selection adjustments and ipd quality check and dispensing what we should consider while prescribing we should confirm the measurement and the prescription which is consider using this centration chart the center of the frame which is over the inverted inverted v and confirm the monocular pd and the fitting height will also confirm the distance correction using a lensometer will also confirm the prism using a prism reference point create a fitting cross and double check the power which verifies the original prescription matches what was ordered and apply anti tolerances to compensated values which is continued here ensure the comfortable fit and vision with the adaptation with the lenses mark are using decals verify that the fitting fitting of the cross is at the center of the pupil and adjust the frame to rise or lower the fit if necessary let's get into the quiz now yeah moving on to second quiz Uh, so again, recall and tell me what are the PAL designs available. We'll wait for thirty seconds for the participants to answer. Yes, I'm going to continue. now get into the adaptation in pal progressive lenses as a seamless invisible design where the power progressively changes throughout the lens because of the design there is an adaptation period in learning to wear progressive lenses should recommend user to turn the head towards the object of focus instead of simply moving the eyes what is the first aim of the wearer faces they feel a dark depth perception issues sure how far some object are from you discomfort or not feeling safe using stairs peripheral vision distortion feels like a narrow field of vision and some other things which is continued here difficulties in seeing objects difficulty in focusing between the distance and in different intermediate and near distances swim and swim effect dizziness or nausea quiz number 3 yeah moving on to quiz number 3 who can explain about what is jump effect Please type your answers in chat box. Oh, 
Okay, Ramya, continue. Yes. Let's get into the adaptation now. Hence, the adaptation plays a major role in the pulse wearer. Such lenses require an adjustment of the amount of virgins required for a given stimulus distance. So, this is called as the prism adaptation. But they also require a change in the virgins' dynamic response at different effective lens power in order to provide virgins' movements. What should be recommended to the patient? Wear them as your primary wear. If it is used as a spare glasses, it will take a far longer to adjust. Find and use in the new areas instead of using the whatever space which is more convenient for them. There are three main areas which is included in the pulse, far, intermediate and near. We ask the patient to learn the zone in the lenses and use them properly. Use a comfortable frame that is adjusted for the face. Lenses to be advised only for the customized requirements. Here is an example of a uh, classical progressive lens wearer and then and then non presbyopic patient. Here they are adapting the head tilt movements. Now we get into the what we should monitor during the adaptation, which is the visual comfort. Perfect adjustment is essential to be obtained the greater benefit of from a progressive lens design. Encourage the patient to visit regularly to have their spectacles checked and adjusted. Visual transparency will recommend that the lenses always be wiped with the microfiber cloth and if they are very dirty, washed in lukewarm water and liquid soap or a suitable product that does not contain any harsh chemicals. Recommend them that the spectacle should be cured in the case after use, that they never be put the lenses face down and they never be exposed to any heat source, car, windscreen, or etc. Visual efficiency. Explain to your patient how presbyo develops over the time. Advise them to have their eyes checked regularly so that they are always bearing a correction suitable for their needs, thus marking that's making it easier to adapt to a change of prescription. Solving the adaptation problem. Record the precise complaint of the wearer, type of problem incurred, frequency, and the particular circumstances of a problem, disturbances, distances, concerns, etc. Measure the lenses, power of the distance vision, near vision, and addition. Remark the lenses, fitting crosses for the distance vision and near vision circles. Check the correct concentration of the lenses. In distance vision and near vision, frame positioned on the wearer space. Check the adjustment of the frame, vertical and horizontal alignment, pantostopic tilt and stability. Validate the subject's prescription. Measure the visual acuity at distance and reading the ability at near. Confirm the value of the addition as related to the age and occupation. Physiological consideration we consider in the pulse. A progressive lens is designed not only to restore a presbyop ability to see clearly at all distances, but also to optimally respect all the physiological visual functions. First one, foveal function, which is accommodation, body and eye movements with the vertical and the horizontal eye movements. Extra foveal vision, space and form perception is provided by the retinas. Per peripheral perception, it is directly influenced by the distribution of prism on the progressive lens surface. Depending on the their orientation and the magnitude of these prismatic effects, the power progression introduces slight deformations of the horizontal and vertical lines, thus altering the wearer's visual comfort. Let's get in the quiz now. Okay, over to the last quiz. Which PL design will provide a better binocular field of view? Is it the symmetrical design or the asymmetrical design? Please answer in the chat box. Yes, Ramya, continue. Binocular after adaptation. Here, the straight line is appreciated only in the center area of the pulse. As it goes to the periphery, it gets distortion and it is disordered. Why prism reference point is important? The prism reference point is centered directly between the two horizontal alignment engravings, usually about 
two to four mm below the fitting cross of the lens. So if there is prism in the glass, it leads to the double images. Verification on prism and the patient needed prism is important before we go ahead with the adaptation process. Why only pulse need time to adapt? Here, the single lens will correct the distance or the near vision and the bifocal will correct the near and the far vision, which is sudden shift. The trifocals correct the near, middle and the near, middle and the intermediate vision. And the progressive lenses will change the magnification of far, middle, intermediate and the near vision, which is as the gradual shift. The geometry of the PAL is in such a way that the power is not symmetrical. Gradually from the top to the power increase, top to the bottom, the power increases. This gradual shift is not seen in the single vision as the full blank possesses the same power or meridians will have the same power top to bottom or right to left as the horizontal axis. Bifocal possesses sudden shift causing clear vision in the areas focused and it doesn't see it. It doesn't have any peripheral distortion areas, so the eye movements are not restricted, but it causes as a jump effect. Here, the advantages and the disadvantages of the pulse advantages, which correct all the distance vision issues in the single lens, have various lens powers, offer a seamless transition without lines, no multiple pair of glasses, no jump effect, no visible line. And the disadvantages of the pulse are adaptation cost required to look at the specific part of the lens to see clearly at the different distances. These are my references. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much, you. Ramya. Yes, sir. So it's time for our chief guest to, to share more pearls about the topic. So we would like to request you to share your pearls about the uh, adaptation of progressive lenses, sir. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I like the presentation. Uh, just like to add a few more points so that uh, I think we can emphasize on a few more points. And uh, I would like to put it as, you know, what, what are the pointers for quick adaptation to avoid troubleshooting in pals, right? So this is a topic which is uh, as similar to what you are speaking and I'd like to... Uh, add a few more points on this. So I, first, what we can do is we can categorize um, each one's role in this. Okay. So the first and the foremost role is the optometrist role. It's the key role of the optometrist. So if you talk about the optometrist, uh, the refraction has to be very precise. That's the major thing. Whatever lens, best lenses you have, if the engine is bad, that is if the power is wrong, then it's not going to work out properly. So the refraction has to be precise. Duochrome has to be balanced. That's very important. And in the first time progressive users, you know, it is good to give a minimum plus for maximum visual acuity. Because if we're going to add on the plus, it's going to increase the distortion. So it's better to give a minimum plus for maximum visual acuity. And also give minimum cylindrical prescription, again for, max, again for maximum visual acuity, especially with oblique axis. If the axis is not in the primary meridian, if it is not at 90 or 180, you could say it's at 45, 130 for anything. Keep the cylinders as minimum as possible. But uh, uh, for instance, if the patient is able to read 6-6 and the patient is able to read 6-6 much better, I would suggest that if they're able to read 6-6 with a little less cylinder, oblique axis, it is fine, right, to start with, especially for first-time PAL users. Then the most important point where we make a mistake is in prescribing ads, okay. We generally prescribe ads based on the chronological age. So what is a chronological age? Say, for example, <clears throat> I am 45 years or I am 50 years. So for 50, generally they give a 245, they give a 1.5. Don't ever do that. Okay. That is going to give us a wrong false value because today the physiological age and chronological age don't match. Right. So what is the physiological age? Physiological age is the age of that person uh, for which he is able to do some better work. For example, I am 42 and I don't need any glasses for reading. Right. Still, you will give a 1.25 ad. So you just check what is the requirement of the patient, how. Uh, how, how active, uh, I would say, the vision is. And uh, so, so this is a very important point. Don't give ads based on the age. Okay, that is a very old, uh, I would say, philosophy. You should be able to change that. Give ads monocularly. I see that most of the prescriptions, the ads are, are, are the same. Okay, but please give your ads monocularly. Third point is that don't give tight ads. Okay, what is the meaning of tight ad? 
for instance if the patient is able to read at 30 cm and if he goes a little back then he is not able to read at 35 cm that is a tight ad don't give never ever give a tight ad to the patient please give them and add a little lesser so that they have a larger working distance you have to give them a distance of around at least 10 to 12 cm from their area of clear zone from where they need it okay so you have to provide approximately 10 to 12 mm of readable or usable distance from their regular working distances so this is a very important point so the optometrist uh, job here if they do this then adaptations to progressive lenses is very quick now we'll, let's go on to the next step where it's a sales team okay so the sales team is going to sell these progressive lenses to uh, your patients whom they have explained so first thing is that the optom also should explain what is a progressive lens and then it is going to be carry forwarded by the sales team so they have to explain the concept the working concept of a progressive lens how they function their properties their blur aspect their abrasion aspects their swim effects okay so this has to be explained to the patient in a very simplified way not that you have to demotivate them you have to tell the pluses you have to tell the minus that's going to take you it might take you some more time for adaptation because of these reasons and the progressive lens behave like this only for everyone the other thing is that never oversell your progressive lenses oversell means you know i have seen patients where their vision itself is uh, say 6 9 6 12 and uh, the you know sales team has told if you wear these glasses you will get the best vision they are actually confusing them so the patient is thinking i'll get back my lost vision you know some it's sometimes they have that uh, thing in their mind the patients and the other thing is that i don't have to move my head you know i'm going to have the best vision possible no it's not going to be possible even the best of lenses there is going to be some amount of abrasion astigmatism because it is a property of a progressive lens so you give realistic expectations third one you have to give you have to provide clear instructions of usage adaptation will go for a toss if the usage procedure is not been uh, informed to them if i give you a, a, a like racing bike okay i i know all of you know how to drive a how to ride a bike but if i give you a racing bike not a single person will be able to ride it they have not less than 16 gears you will not be able to ride it so you have to teach them you have to give them clear instructions how to use a progressive lens it's very important while delivering the progressive lenses what you have to do is you have to practically make the patient wear the glasses and ask them to read check their intermediate look for distance and ask them to walk also so you are covering almost all the distances starting from 30 cm 60 or 70 cm and then for distance and for walking so you have to literally take them through with their glasses till the entire process is over this is the last mile uh, it's very very important it's not that you have given instructions after instructions when they are going to come back they have actually forgotten all these things they might have some fear in their mind when they are coming back that okay how it is going to be i don't know with the glasses ask them go step by step in a clear procedure first always start with distance because distance is easy then go to reading reading is 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 a little more easier after that i mean the next step then your computer distance and then walking okay for each each step you have to instruct them how to use it properly so for instance if you want for distance they they don't have to do anything much you wear your glasses look straight your distance vision is quite clear for reading ask them to hold it at the normal working distance they are going to converge your eyes will look down most of the time your n6 will be clear but in case if it is not clear just ask them to raise their head or lower their head the object will come into picture okay the point where it comes into picture ask them to stop and read this is the second part third one is ask them to hold it at an arm's length right you show them again you ask them to see if they are able to see or not again the head movement is important here then one more point is that you can hold the book slightly to the periphery ask them not to move their head just move their eyes and show them that there is a blur which is seen they will not be able to see the object at the periphery right so ask them to move their head to the text and then they will see that yes the object is clear so it's not that you are showing them what is clear but also do show them what is not clear also right so once they go home or in their workplace if they are they are coming across any situation they will be only cursing you or thinking about you that i bought the best lenses but it did not work but in this situation that will not happen last instance is while walking generally while walking what happens is we don't move our head much i mean we don't lower uh, our head uh, lower down we generally tend to move our eyes a little down if you do that you are looking through the intermediate or the reading portion and what is going to happen is you are going to see a blur image you are going to see a magnified image at the bottom so you have you have to ask your patient to lower your head to the point whichever you want to see and then the object comes into picture generally on a flat surface there's no problem but if you are going on say say for instance on the road side or you are just walking down the stairs it's very important that, that these instructions have to be given to them so this is about the sales team
Now, other measurements that you have to take. In terms of the measurements, yes, you know that the interpupillary distance is very, very important. That to the monocular interpupillary distance is, it's, it's, I mean, the monocular PD is very important. Here, one more thing which you have to uh, understand. I do not know if people have done any research or study on this. If you are going to take a pupillometer and you are going to mark the PDs or you're going to take the measurement, it is a corneal reflex value that you generally get, right? But when you are going to use a marker uh, on the frame, you are going to take your pupillary centers. But there is a small difference between the corneal reflex and the pupillary centers, okay? So this is a very, very important point. I generally would go with the pupil centers. If the case is very sensitive, go with the pupil centers. Corneal reflex is fine. If the addition is low, if uh, the prescription for distance is also low, uh, low then corneal reflex generally 90 to 95% of the cases works. But if it's a troubleshoot, they have come back. Please don't go by corneal reflex. Please go by the pupil centers only. Take a torch light and then take a pen and then you mark it. That's the best thing. Next one. When it comes to measurements, the fitting height is also important. So apart from just taking uh, the pupillometer, please use a fit. Uh, and uh, after that, you have to mark it on the frame and then you have to find the fitting height also. Now, people, what they make a mistake here in, in, in the fitting heights is that if the frame is big, they generally give the reading at the bottom of the uh, frame, which is not correct. You should not do that. Okay. Because now the trend is to use bigger frames, future that in it, earlier it was smaller and the trend will keep changing. But you should always see that, you know, when a person is looking from distance to near, the angle at which it is going down. So if you're going to measure in like in, in a scale of millimeters, it's generally between 16 to 20 millimeters, right? So even if you're having a fitting height, which is more than 20, 22, or even 25 mm, please don't go by it. 16, 17, 18, or even 19 mm should be fine for them. Okay. So this is about the fitting height measurements. Now, fitting heights for specific cases, right? So if you talk about myopia, now, um, myopic cases, once you mark the PD centers on the frame, fit it two millimeters below the fitting cross. Okay. You mark your lens is 2 mm below the pupil centers. I'll give you a reason why. Because today's lifestyle is very different. As you walk, you, you just observe how people walk. Okay, They generally don't have their head placed down. You know, they it, it is not even straight. It is already raised because the lifestyle has changed. You know, their earnings have gone up. So people and, and they are in a high. So it's always good that if you are going to mark your, if you are going to fit your lenses 2 mm at the bottom, However high they are, even the head is going a little more, you know, above, there's no problem. They will be very comfortable for the distance, especially for the myopic cases, right? And how do you, uh, okay, this is one point. Other thing is that if, uh, other thing what I generally do is if you want to take a measurement, you can, uh, you can ask the patient to raise the chin a little up, right? Ask the patient to, to raise the chin a little up and then mark it. But how do you, but how do you know how much high or, 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 or how much, um, Chin raising they are supposed to do. So, uh, one simple uh, uh, thumb rule is that your temple, you can have your temple generally parallel to the ground level. Now, if I'm talking now, it's probably at an angle. So, if I do this, now this temple is going to be parallel to the ground level. I ask the patient to stop there and then mark the PDs and then you can fit it as per that because our, it's, it's a lifestyle issue. Okay. In case of like hypropic cases, I don't think you need to make any changes. You can fit it as per their uh, pupil centers. Okay. So, this is one thing which will like really make a difference if it is about myopic uh, cases. Now, if you're going to talk about uh, corridors, now prescribing corridors is a very big challenge because we are always confused, you know, should we give a short corridor? Should we give a like, long corridor or should we give a corridor which is having a specific fitting height? So it's always like a confusion. But uh, again, to like, simplify things, what you can do is, you can generally give a short corridor, which is around 10 to 15 millimeters. Okay. What do you mean by short corridor? I'm not talking about the fitting height. That is from your uh, prism reference point. Okay. Till the start of the reading, it's the corridor. It's, it's not to the near visual zone also. Just about the, it's just about the vis uh, like near vision zone uh, circle. From that point to uh, the prism reference point, that is called the corridor. Okay. And if you're going to add three to four millimeters, then you'll have your near visual point. That is where you're going to have your full addition into place. So in fact, most of these companies today talk about corridors, few companies talk about fitting heights. So if it is going to be your corridor, add two to three millimeters extra for fitting height. And if it is only going to be corridor, then you can leave it like that. So another rule of thumb, which we can follow is for young press biops, you can give short corridors. Okay. If the ad is less than uh, or equal to say 1.75 diopters, then you can give short corridors between 10 to 15 mm. 
if the corridor is short the amount of abrasions are more but since the, the addition is is little lesser okay it shouldn't be a problem to them and if you if you are uh, uh, if you are going to talk about regular corridors which is around 17 mm and above you give this to patients who are having addition greater than 2 diopters so 50 plus you can give them like regular corridors because as ad is increasing your abrasions are increasing right and now they have got used to this progressive lenses so it's easy they already know that they have to raise their head a little and and a little more would not like really make a change for them at that age right unless and until if they are having any back uh, problem or anything like that so uh, ads greater than 2 diopters or even for hypermetropes who are having plus 1.5 diopters for distance you can give them regular corridors any 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 patient having a prescription greater than 1.5 diopters of cylinder oblique axis right so in order to reduce your abrasions it is always better that you give a regular corridor for patients who are above 50 that is who are having ads or or who are having ads which are more than plus 2 hyperopes okay who are already having a plus 4 distance for them also regular corridor is better and and if you are if you are having an oblique axis and especially for cylinder is greater than 1.5 diopters okay so this is basically how to prescribe your corridors now let's talk about the other aspects am i audible no <laughs> response yeah yeah yes, sir, sir. Audible, okay, fine. So now there are other aspects which you can also take care in order to reduce your patient from coming back, or if uh, uh, in in order to avoid this troubleshooting. So uh, I've just noted a few points. One is you can use a pre-cal method for plus powers. Pre-cal is a method which is nothing but the minimum size uncut in order to reduce the sag height. So once the sag height is reduced, there are many advantages. One, the thickness is going to be lesser. Even the magnification or the minification is going to come down. you use a pre-cal or uh, uh, or the minimum size uncut for for powers for plus powers for minus generally the sag will not work because uh, the amount of thickness which uh, the minus have at the center is very less right so you will use it for out say plus powers for distance having powers of greater than 1.5 or more anything less than that it might not really work pandoscopic tilt everybody knows about this has to be between 8 and 12 degrees okay because it helps in easy reading then other point is about variable inset now look, what is inset inset is basically that when we read our eyes converge but our convergence basically is um varies on three factors it actually depends on three factors one is your ipd if your ipd is smaller you will be able to converge more correct then it depends upon the index so if the if the index is going to be higher and if it's a plus prescription then the convergence is more and for minus it will be vice versa and uh, and uh, it's going to be the power the index and your pd index power and pd so so like you based on these three things your inset will be variable if a patient is single eye patient okay then don't give him a, a progressive lens which is having any inset at all give him a zero inset option so there are you know lenses available where your inset can be made zero because a, a patient with single eye he is not going to his eye is not going to move inwards because he is not going to see that way he is always going to assume that my left eye is uh, is not there or uh, or is, uh, i'm just blocking it now automatically my head is going to move to my left in order to take that field into consideration so while reading he is going to move his head like this and he is going to either look up or down and hence inset will not work for such patients you know in the books you would have said that don't give progressive lenses for uh, uh, for um, single eye patients for uh, uh, anisometropic cases and and so many things but i think you should try even for aviator shape lens you don't give so no, there's nothing like that you can try and you can learn from them and you can try to improvise on it apart from this there is a uh, mild trap angle is also required in your spectacles the spectacles are flat it's your field of view is going to be reduced give them a slight small trap angle of 4 to 5 degrees it's going to make them better in terms of the field of view other aspects which we can cover here is your differential prism uh, uh, it's a differential vertical prismatic effect now uh, in the prism reference point the amount of prisms that have been given it was discussed in the last seminar two third of the addition is the prisms that has been given there and which can be measured at the prism reference point right now uh, okay, these prisms are there in the right eye and in the left eye it is there both but if the differential that is if you are if assume that in my right eye i am having a one prism in my left i am having a say a base down prism in my right eye one and i am having a 1.5 base down prism in my left eye so the differential vertical prismatic effect is 0.5 right so there is not going to be any harm or or any any problem in terms of adaptation but if it is going to be more than one diopter 
right if it is 1 and this is 2.25 then definitely you have to uh, it has to be brought to the labs concern and reduce the prisms this is one horizontal prisms can be uh, it, it can it can go up to 2.5 prisms also why because our horizontal um, uh, this fusional reserves are much more higher than the amount of horizontal prisms that are induced so they will be able to converge and take over those prisms up to 2.5 prisms but vertically your prism has to be less than one prism in fact i have seen many troubleshoots where the patient is fine in terms of his vision he is fine in terms of reading and fine in terms of walking all that but he says i am feeling something strange i am feeling something strange right so after after doing an examination we are not able to find out anything even the prisms are also within the normal limits such cases very very rare cases please get this prisms removed out at all you you can remove it out from the from the progressive lens get them removed and ask them to wear them only disadvantage is that your progressive lens will be a little thicker because the prisms have been added in order to reduce the thickness at the bottom of the lenses it will be slightly thicker which the patient will accept but he will be more comfortable then when we talk about the frame selection so there has to be an adequate area for distance and near you know some uh, labs or uh, some companies or some stores they are having a fixed mindset that they should need to have a 9 mm 10 mm for distance and you are going to give them say 18 or 19 mm at the bottom please don't follow that you have to go as per your monocular pd only that's very very important you can go as low as even 8 mm i have fitted even 5 mm but please don't follow that thing unless you are very confident in handling the patient otherwise uh, i would say 10 11 12 or even higher is also fine but the pd has to match you just don't go blindly by saying that uh, we need to leave a 10 mm gap and all that so please don't go by that then if you are going to talk about uh, frames what you can give your patients uh, especially to people whom you think might get a little fussy or you know might create a little problem metal frames are better with nose pads and uh, you can have these temples which are medium thick so that they are very easy to uh, adjust uh, if, if, the, if the temples are too thick you cannot do any adjustments and if you don't have nose pads it's going to be a little more difficult to adjust you can even go for shell frames with which are acetate frames you know acetate uh, they are very easy to uh, to bend on heating so acetate frames will be the second choice and the last choice for such patients or for patients who are whom you think might have a problem or if you are not confident on the prescription please avoid the uh, uh cellulose propanate frame grillamide frames which is known as also known as tr uh, frames ultem frames nylon frames polyamide frames because these frames are generally not very much um, easy to uh, uh, to bend or you know uh, it's uh, they are not easy uh, to uh, uh, to get where we want you know the frame to really sit so it's better to avoid them cellulose acetate is better and you can also go in for metal frames now just uh, a few more points on uh, if the prescription is more then what you have to do the prescription is more means now if you take uh, uh, the law in uh, uk uh, they have uh, they have a benchmark anything more than plus or five uh, if it is more than plus or minus five doctors then you have to give the vertex distance of your examination uh, and you have to give the pd and you have to give the height it has to be fitted as per that they go for separate glasses for distance and near even for a single vision prescription so there the laws are very different but here at least what we can do is for progressive lenses if the prescription is more and if it is more than plus or minus 5 doctors please compensate the vertex distance like you compensate your powers for uh, your contact lenses right please do that for spectacle lenses also i know it's going to be very very difficult for you to explain to your patient it's why you are doing it because nobody is going to do that and uh, but it it works you can also compensate for the progressive prescription if it is a back surface progressive right in fact most of the companies or higher value lenses they give you a back surface compensated power they'll give you a card they'll say that okay your power is say minus 5 uh, addition is uh, 3 and now i'm giving you uh, 4.75 uh, and the addition is uh, it's 2.75 okay so they'll give you a compensated prescription which the card will mention because if the patient goes to some other uh, hospital or or some other place and they're going to measure the power it will not match and they have then they would have paid a huge amount of money for that right so but you need to keep your patient in the loop for all this you have to inform them uh this is all what i have to say okay one or two more points i'd just like to add and i'd like to finish it off uh when you uh, 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 when you are dispensing uh, a progressive lens to a second time or a third time user please see to that uh, you check their habits now what do you mean by habits uh, every, everybody has a specific way of reading uh, everybody has a specific way of uh, moving their head and all that so how can you check what their habit is you you can't say that you please Uh, you know we don't have artificial intelligence systems to to measure their habits or how they are uh, sitting or how their head move, moves what you can do is just check the fitting height or check the design of the patient what they're using earlier 
right? So based on that, some habit would have been created. Assume that they are using a specific lens brand, and you should know you should know the logo of each each company. Have it noted. Note what lens it is, what design it is. Give a lens which is matching that design or higher. Don't go lower to that. Okay. So that habit will be will be maintained. Especially the fitting height corridors are very very important for habits. The habit could be like you know it could be raising your head a little up or down. How far they are holding it. So this is one thing I would like you to uh, also keep in mind as a habit. And uh, these days there are many uh, more uh, advanced progressive lenses which has sensitivity testing in them, which I have already spoken in our OCI uh, presentations. So sensitivity is the ability of every person to accept a certain amount of blur. That is known as sensitivity. Now, uh, for me, in fact, that test has 17 pages. I was able to see the script or the page having an N6 font size at a at page number. I don't know. I think it was nine. I was able to see clearly at nine, and the other person was able to see it clearly at say 15, right? So the sensitive his sensitivity is much much more than mine. So the spread of the blur which these new age progressive lenses can do is phenomenally well. So you know they can actually uh, compress the blur and give it to me to the amount of sensitivity which I can accept. So I feel. Even that amount of blur is clear for me because I am able to accept it. But for the other person, if you give the same design, he will not be able to accept it. You have to spread. You sorry, you have to spread the blur and give it to him because his sensitivity is much higher. So there are such lenses also which are available. So if you follow a few of these guidelines, then I think uh, the troubleshooting in your clinic or in your hospital, uh, in your store, will come down drastically. Uh, and if this is going to happen, you are going to be a successful progressive lens dispenser. Your confidence will increase. You will have more footfalls. More and more troubleshooted patients will come to you, and once they come to you, they are going to stick to you because uh, you know troubleshooting is uh, is something where they have a trust on you that you have solved the problem. And Ange Pona had this, so so I, I would suggest that follow these small small uh, I would say tricks, and I think it should work. It will work. Thank you very much. Definitely, sir. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, sir. So we quickly go through the answers for the quiz, sir. And we got a couple of questions to be discussed from the audience. So I oh, request, yeah. So we got one one questions, uh, one one question from Zoom and YouTube. In the meantime, okay. I request the audiences to post the questions if you have any. We quickly go through the answers of the quiz comp, uh, quiz questions today. Meenakshi, please pitch in. Okay, thank you, Gomati. As Gomati said, we'll brush up to the answers. Okay, first question is: What are the permanent markings in progressive lenses? They are nothing but the brand logo. The add value and the micro etching, we call it as permanent markings in the PAL. Then let's down the PAL designs available. As we saw in previous class, then I think by the hard and soft design, symmetrical and asymmetrical design, and the mono and multi designs. So what is jump effect? Third question. Usually jump effect is appreciated in bifocals. That is in the bifocals we have a clear uh, segment of near vision part. In during the near, I mean in the superior superficial part of the visible line. We see an image displacement. That image displacement we call it as jump effect. Then, which PAL design provides a better binocular field of view? Nothing but the asymmetrical design always. The second image, only the asymmetrical design will provide a better binocular field of view as it is adjusted based on both the eyes. Thank you, Gomati. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, shall we go through the questions, sir? Yeah, from the sure, audience. Yeah. So one question from the YouTube audience: Will the patient shift back to the bifocals if the pulse is not working, or if it is going to be difficult for them to get adapted? Yeah, they can shift back to bifocals. There is no problem at all. But just see to that you give them. Uh, see, in in your bifocals, your radiation is again very important. Uh, if you are going to give them a tight ad or an ad uh, which is even a point of view lesser, it might not work if they are having an intermediate uh, uh, work. So please give them a ad which is a little lesser, and please check thoroughly before you do so. That's one. Number two, while prescribing the ad, see you'll like see to that uh, in in our trial frame. We always put the addition in the first slot, right? And but in our glasses, they are at a specific distance. Say it's going to be around twelve, fourteen mm, even and and your segment is going to be in the front, so it could be around fifteen millimeters. But in your trial frame, it is much much ahead of it. So in your trial frame, assume that you are giving an ad of plus two point five, it's giving you a magnification effect. So. Please don't keep it on the frontmost slot. You can probably keep it in the slot where you place your cylindrical prescription, so that you get the 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 magnification part of it is being compensated for. In the trial frame, the patient will be able to see much better. But when you give a bifocal, you'll see it's not clear. It should not become again reverse. So this is one thing you can keep into consideration. Give a little less ad. 
if they want a inter- little more intermediate distance it will work no problem okay sir yeah so i think that answered for the question to the youtube audience so now we quickly see the question from the zoom audience um if you if the markings are completely wrong how will you adjust the lenses nothing just change the lenses 100% you have to change the lenses don't worry about uh, uh, your money your loss but if you lose your patient you have lost your patient for life so it's better that you change one pair of lenses now and retain them for life Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. So those were the questions from the audience today. Thank you so much for being that such patient throughout the session. So we are so glad to have you here. For sure, we will be calling you once again for some other session in the future, also, sir. Thank you so much for joining, no sir. No problem. That's all. That many questions? No many more questions? I no, sir. There will be many we questions. Have, we have answered almost all the questions. I request the audience to post the questions in the comment box. When you see the video, come across the video. Please post your questions in the comment box. We'll get back to the answers. To, we'll get back to all the answers. thank you that sir thank you so much for joining yeah yes ma'am that was a very practical uh, session and uh, you know you have given all the tips which which we can implement from tomorrow practically so you have <laughs> shared your personal experience of uh, troubleshooting uh, these uh, patients and often we uh, come across this complaint you know we i have bought one uh, progressive lens from one of the optical outlet and it is i'm having problem and patient, we often we see that patient losing a big amount of money and uh, you know these right. tips will be really really useful so hope this will be uh, uh, you know implemented uh, so taken care and uh, yeah implement. if if these things are implemented by all what will happen is the public will have a very strong confidence on progressive lens. progressive so there will i would say that bifocal segment can be washed out but all the optoms have to do a good work for this it's very important there will be a small percentage of people who might not you you might not be able to cater whatever you do it is they we have in my clinic also okay. in spite of me also knowing all this but th- there is a small percentage which we can ignore so 99% we can cater to if everybody is going to be very strong on these small small tips of uh, dispensing progressive lenses so is there any uh, uh, preference on brand particular brand is easy to adapt or anything or uh, it is yeah see actually uh, based on the power you will have to suggest your progressive lenses if it is okay. going to be a, a plus power it's going to be a hyperopic uh, a patient it's always always better to give a harder design okay it is you always give a hard design and if it is going to be a minus prescription you can give a softer design okay. uh, in a in a plus power generally what happens is the blur is more and uh, in a soft design the blur is being spread across okay so the spread of the blur uh, is generally not suitable i'll, I'll tell you what is the meaning of uh, clear vision first uh, clear zone as per uh, abdo or uh, as yeah as per abdo up to minus 1 cylindrical of power even if it is there in the clear zone is supposed to be clear zone of vision okay okay so ma- imagine you wearing a minus cylinder which you don't have okay, okay. so that's okay. so that area itself is a blur area but they say it is clear zone okay this is as per the rules i think according as time progresses them. according to them so it it will change because we are getting more and more sensitive as life is uh, becoming yes. more comfortable to us yes. so i think they'll have to bring that value down Okay. Uh, so for hard designs, better to give. Uh, sorry, uh, for for, for hyperops, hard designs are better. For myops, soft designs are better. So there are lenses which are known as multi. They are called multi designs or multi uh, uh, multi aspect designing is done where you don't have to know what design it is. If you give that lens for that power, automatically the design will come into picture and it will go to them. So okay. there are such lenses which are known as multi design lenses. So this is a very easy thing which you can do. Uh, in fact even the basic of basic lens you can give to any of your patients provided they are ready to accept uh, that small change or a small adaptation time uh, if they are ready to accept then you can give uh, okay. any progressive lens but you have to be okay. very clear to them okay so so thank you mehul uh, yeah go thanks a lot thanks a lot i loved thank it thank you so much sir uh, go thank you thank you can so we have a, a small yeah. announcement before we are closing it Sure. So, uh, so we would like to inform, uh, that our student, uh, Ms. Sharda Devi. So she was from two thousand sixteen to two thousand twenty batch. 
so uh, she uh, she was the university topper and uh, she was receiving the award last week from uh, honorable uh, governor of tamil nadu mr r n ravi so uh, we congratulate our student we are very proud and happy to inform this news to everybody over here and also at this point of time uh, we, uh, i am very happy to congratulate each and every faculty so who trained the student and other staff and members of this college so we are proud uh, sharada devi and uh, also we want to convey this you know students who are here so try to uh, get this as an inspiration and uh, perform well in your uh, other academic uh, uh, things okay so uh, thank you all the, so we would like to say that you know this uh, the entire thing is coordinated by gomudi and uh, minakshi so thank you for this excellent uh, coordination thank you ramya so and once again thank you mehul for this excellent session over thank to gomudi thank you thank you very much thank you. so adding to the point of uh, maheshwari ma'am i'd like to say that consistent year college is doing great in the university so we stand first every year so for we stand first every year at the university exams so we are very we are very happy to share that happy news that this year also we stood first to all our uh, youtube audience so congratulations sharda devi for your achievement so with that i would like to one second repeat if you have any questions with regard to this particular session please post it in the comment box we will surely get back to you with the answers if you want to know more happenings and updates about what is happening at dr agarwal institute of optometry please do follow our instagram and facebook page i will add the description i will add the link in the description box so we we with the team meet you all in the next episode of optometry series thank you all so much for joining bye bye everyone thank, thank you. you thank you bye 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 thank you